If you find yourself doing the same steps over and over again inside of Adobe Illustrator, then this is the video you're gonna wanna watch. Welcome back designers, my name is Mike Pickett. I'm a vector and logo designer with nearly 20 years in the design industry. And this channel is all about helping you become a better designer. We're starting out with some tool tutorials. So we're actually going through Adobe Illustrator right now. And very soon on this channel, I'm also gonna start doing Photoshop tutorials, Adobe InDesign, as well as some project-based stuff. So I come from a Photoshop background and now I'm working a lot more inside of Adobe Illustrator. Something I used to use a lot when I was working in Photoshop was actions where you could record your steps and then with just a simple click of a button, it would perform those steps for you again and it would just speed things up. So knowing how to create actions inside of Adobe Illustrator can help your workflow. It's gonna help speed things up for you. It's not a hard process. I've got a few steps to show you. This is gonna be a quick one. So let's hop over to Illustrator and I'll show you how this all works. All right, designers, here we are inside of Adobe Illustrator again. I went ahead and just created a 1080 by 1080 artboard. Now chances are you're not gonna see your actions window. In order to get there, we're gonna go up to window at the top and we're gonna come down to actions. And you'll see that there's no keyboard shortcut for this. We could drag this over and just place it inside of our little bar on the side here so that we've got it built in with the rest of our tools. So I'm gonna click on the actions button. Everything that you see here is built into Adobe Illustrator. This is kind of the default actions window. If you're not seeing this and you'd like to, you can come up here to the little hamburger menu and click reset actions. And that'll bring everything back for you. So the basics of this, each one of these is just meant to make your workflow a little bit quicker. So for example, let's grab two shapes. I'm gonna go with a square and then I'm also gonna create a circle. And if I highlight both of these and go Unite Selection, you'll see that it's gonna do the same thing as if I went over and highlighted both of them and just clicked on Unite in my Shape Builder. So this is why I don't use the ones that are kind of built into Adobe Illustrator is because a lot of them just don't make much sense. Now, if you find yourself having to do the same steps over and over and again in a project, or if there's something that you do on a pretty consistent basis, then it makes sense to make your own actions. So I'm gonna go ahead and open a file here, something that I've worked on before. I've got this Fortnite revolver that I made, but I've got the outline for it over here. Cause something that I do quite a bit when I'm working with these pieces is I'll actually grab this, I'll go up to object, I'll go path, outline stroke, then I'll come over and I'll unite it inside of uh, my pathfinder. And then what I wanna do is I also wanna grab the text. So I'll go up to type and come down here to create outlines. So that's something that I do on a pretty consistent basis with each one of these pieces. So let's just back up here. I'm gonna command Z. So I'm gonna come back to a point where my stroke and my type are still alive and I can make edits to them. Let's just grab that whole piece. I'm gonna copy it. And we're gonna come back over to this piece here, paste it in, and let's start from this point. So again, this is still all live. I wanted to, I could change the ho-ho-ho, I could make additions to my stroke or add pieces or whatever I needed to do, this is live. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get rid of everything I've got here. So I'm gonna delete the selection, which clears out my actions. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a set by clicking on the folder, and we're gonna go Mike's Custom Actions. You can name it whatever you want. Don't use Mike's custom actions. So there's my first set of actions. And then I'm gonna click on the little plus sign here to create a new action. You're gonna to wanna to name these something that makes sense to you in the end. So I'm gonna say outline, stroke, and text. We're gonna put it in this set. I can add a function key to this. I'm gonna say function one. Now. If you had those other ones in here still, some of them may be taken up by some of the function keys. So at that point, you would either have to not use a function key or figure out a way around it using a combination of either shift and command or getting into a different function. Most of the time, I leave mine just none and none and then come back to the actions panel whenever I need to use them on a regular basis. So that's what we're gonna do for this one. We're gonna leave it at none and none and I'm gonna go record. So now at this point, everything that I do is being recorded. So if I were to move this, it would actually record that movement. Selecting objects is okay. You'll notice that nothing happened in this window when I just went and highlighted that. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to our object menu. So I'm gonna go to object. I'm gonna come down to path. 
and I'm going to go outline stroke. And you'll see that it's now added outline stroke and it's actually performed that action for me. Next, I'm going to come up here to type. And I'm going to come down to create outlines. And it's went ahead and created outlines. Now the one last step that I take on these, because I know that my work is done at this point, I've done all my cleanup, I've done everything I need to do with this, I'm going to start coloring next, is I'm going to come over here to the Pathfinder and I'm going to go Unite. Next I want to hit Stop down here at the bottom, because I don't want to start doing anything else until I've finished recording my action. So I hit Stop, and that is now a completed action and everything will happen. So let's just back up here, I'm going to Command Z again, back to the point where we got Strokes and Live Type. If I highlight this, click on my outline stroke and text and just hit play, it's done. So that's all one piece now and it went through and did everything that it was supposed to. And there's a couple of options I want to talk to you about up here in the hamburger menu. I'm not going to go through all of these. Some of them get into a little bit more detail than I want to cover in this first video on actions. First one I'm going to talk about is this action options. So inside of here, we can actually go in and make edits that we need to. So again, if I wanted to now change this so that I can hit just F1 on my keyboard to make this happen, I can make those edits. The other one we can go is playback options and by playback, accelerated step by step, or you can pause for a certain time in between each one just to make sure that things are going right. I usually just leave it on accelerated and let it do its thing. I'll show you what step by step is if we go OK. And I'm just going to Command Z back again. So now we're stroked and we've got text that isn't outlined. And if I hit play on this, you'll see that it kind of step by step walks its way through. Lastly, we can come in here and I can go to button mode is the last piece that I want to talk about. And you'll see with button mode. So I've backed up again. And now what happens if I highlight this, I can just click here. That orange highlight means that it's working. I'm going to go out of this. I don't normally use button mode. I kind of like to have these so that I can come in and see it and watch it go through. The other thing I don't do, and as I said, playback options, I leave this on accelerated. All right, designers, so I hope you can see how actions can really help speed up your workflow. They're really not difficult to create. Just make sure you get your steps in the correct order and make sure you're hitting that little record button before you actually start clicking through your process. Now, if you're just getting started inside of Adobe Illustrator, I've got a great playlist linked right up here that's gonna walk you through 20 different tools that you can use inside of Illustrator. It's gonna help you speed up your workflow. It's gonna help you understand what you can do inside of Illustrator. And if you really practice, you can become a really good graphic designer in a short period of time. So that's it for this one, designers. I had to get back to work, get out there and design something, and I'll see you in the next video, which you can find right up there. Go ahead, click on it. You know you want to. If you forgot to subscribe, subscribe right up here.